Well, shooters and reloaders and three circles passengers and members, it's Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the Hot Lead Zone Express. And this is part 12 of our video series on the Lee App Press. I'd like to thank Walter Bunning for warning us that there's a chance to get corrosion of this part. And it's important to get some mineral oil and wipe this part off, the lower part of the breech lock, before we put it back together to prevent that corrosion. Also, he suggests, along with Dick Tickles, they suggest that you can actually use the regular shell holders as well as the X shell holder that Lee makes for this press. So if you ever want to go ahead and do certain kinds of procedures where the case doesn't slide through, use the regular shell holders. Also, Justin tells us about the Chiapa adapters for the 12 gauge. This one happens to be a 38 special 357 Magnum adapter and what Justin has seen is on some of his Chiapa adapters there are little burrs in the chamber area so if you get any burrs like that just carefully remove them. So uh, thanks to Justin for that warning on the Chiapa adapters. We take care of that and our adapters will sing for us. Incidentally I know some of you are going to ask some questions about the little die rack holder that I've got here and it's a homemade design. Notice that it'll hold 12 reloading dies. Drop-in fit comes out nice but also it's got uh, little holes for 10 shell holders on the lower level and there are small holes for lead dippers to go through as you see one right there in the middle. So you can be actually ready for up to four different reloading die sets in this die holder and be handy right there on your reloading bench right next to your press. I show this to you because the holidays are coming up and if you need some gift ideas you can make these out of any hardwood that you have handy. So the Lee App Press has been around for a number of years now and I've already done 11 videos in this series on the Lee App Press and it's time to do conclusions, right? Talking to Dick Tickles, the problem is that in true science, every time you get a conclusion, more questions pop up. So it's actually possible to be completely unable to finish a topic like this because it keeps going on and on. But we want to get some conclusions. Well, let's start with some ideas about this press that you may not have heard. So the ever innovative engineers at Lee Precision were no doubt looking at this situation where we really are forming brass casings. After all, we're not trying to stamp car body frames. We're not trying to swedge stem bolts that need a lot of force. So since we're doing brass, why do we need to have a 20 or 22 or 25 pound or even heavier press to form the brass. We should be able to manage it with a lighter kind of press. And then the RCBS Summit Press was different in that it used a die that was pushed down onto a stationary case instead of the case going into the die, being forced into the die. When the ram is pushing a case into the die you need to have a frame to support that and a heavy frame is required if you got a heavy ram and you're going ahead and doing that. So with the Summit Press the problem with it is still used a very heavy ram because they wanted to get the concentricity and the alignment with the use of that heavy ram. Well what the Lee engineers did was by using a floating shell holder in the X and Y axis and a floating die because there's some movement here along this 
you can get that alignment without having to have a real heavy ram in the back. So they decided to use two thin rams. And what makes this work is that this pivoting point here is right in the middle of the die and it's going straight down because of the way the linkage is working so that the force is straight down onto the case and the forces are really on the die itself. There's no ram that's being stressed out. These rams just basically support the movement and there's no force that is being done with the cartridge case being directed onto the rams. So they can go ahead and make the rams out of steel tubing with a bolt that goes through and a nut underneath and they're headed the bolts up here and this is really a light situation comp compared to other presses which allows the whole press to be light and then by use of aluminum pot metal type of arrangement here and there you can save a lot of weight so that this is an incredibly light press. In fact this press has been accused of being flimsy because watch this. Do you see it moving? How flimsy is that? But even when it's moving there's no stress on that. So that this bolt goes through and if you just put your finger underneath here where the nut is you can finger tighten this like this. And you need to do this every once in a while so that that doesn't move. You see that? If you don't take care of that, that nut will fall off on the bottom and it'll be a real nuisance. So I recommend you tighten these things up every time you use this press. And if you do, you got no problem. Now look at the Lee Innovation here. The head of this bolt has a little bit of a lip on it and that's what stops the upward movement of this part. So when you go back, there's the stop right there. Now the lower the stop is created because the part of the linkage in the back here moves forward to allow this part to be straight up and down all times. And this part, when it butts up against the back of this moving platform, that's what stops it. And you can't get too much force on that because the position of the force down at the bottom makes these two little rams receive very, it's very strong there because it's so short a distance from the bottom of the... By the way, here's another look at that ingenious straight up and down positioning of this point right here and how it relates to the die. See how it goes straight up and down. All because of the way this linkage works. This is what creates no force on the rams. Straight up and down forces concentrated on the die. Now what we're talking about is what limits the downward movement. It goes to a complete stop and that's because this part here butts up against the back of this and that is a very short distance for the bolts on this ram to absorb. So there's not a low ho there's no movement or very little movement to the rams caused by this. And this is what enables us to bump back a 308 case, the shoulder to bump that back three thousandths is because this is very strong stop. Now if we were putting that force up here, then it's only a matter of time until everything breaks up down here on the bottom base plate. But this base plate can be made of the same inexpensive alloy, almost like a pot metal, because there's no force or very little force being directed to the base. It's really a positive stop on the lower and the upper part of the movement and that's important. Well it turns out that I was actually thinking about getting an RCBS Summit Press but now that I've used the Lee App Press 
the uh, Summit Press no longer has any interest for me. In fact, Doug up in Redding, California is a collector of old presses and what he does is he acquires all these old presses and then he restores them into very good condition and working condition. And what he says about the Liap press, now since he's worked with a lot of presses, so he knows where presses have come from. And he calls this arrangement stress effort. And what a great way to put that because that's exactly what this is. The effort and the stress is controlled in a very effective way. Sure, the Lee App Press can do normal pistol ammo, but what about the long rifle cartridges? Well, I'm pleased to inform you that you could actually load 375 Holland and Holland Magnum with the Lee App Press. So, having run about 6,000 cases through this press and loading probably around maybe 600 rounds of ammunition. The only knock I have on this press is that when I did the precision reloading for the 308 Winchester, I got an 18.5% rejection rate, but I did get 22 rounds of 0.003 inch bumped ammunition that had a run out of less than one thousandth of an inch, perhaps one thousandth of an inch at most, which is very good. So I can't fault the ammo created, even precision ammo. The fact that that ammo did not shoot better than my previous precision ammo in my Savage Bottle 11 VT is not a condemnation on this press. It shot as well definitely not worse and but not better so if that means that it'll shoot if that means that precision ammo is enabled by this press then that might be a kind of an eye-opener to a lot of people that doesn't mean that we all need to go out and do precision reloading with this press because we all have our favorites but it's an option definitely for new reloaders, and definitely entry-level precision shooters. So the conclusion is that this Lee App Press is much more than a processing press, because the APP stands for Advanced Processing Press. It's not really a case brass processing press. It's actually that and also a fine single-stage reloading press able to do all things that single stage presses can do. That's a good conclusion and I hope that this has caused more questions in the mind of you, the viewer, so that you'll be inspired to do your own testing and create more data on this press to see what you can come up with. So we'll end this video series with this, that this press is a fine press for any single stage use actually and it does so almost unbelievably well. So from the brand new reloader to the experienced long time reloader to the high volume competitive progressive shooter and all the way to the precision reloaders, the Lee App Press has utility for you and made to be durable. The parts that do wear out can be replaced very easily and without a lot of trouble. So take care. We'll see you next video. Bye for now.